So I wish I had funny jokes to tell you, because yeah. that would be better if you were laughing. Yeah, that's right. Hey everybody, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. I'm Damien, I'm joined by Ed Thompson. Edward, what are we talking about today? We're talking about GitHub Actions and how easy it is to take code in your GitHub repository and do some automation around that, whether that's responding to issues, doing a build, or do doing a deploy. Yeah, another option for CICD, don't miss it. Hi everyone, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. I am Damien Brady and I am joined by Ed Thompson. Yes. Edward, thanks for joining me. Oh, hey. Thanks for having me. Awesome. We are at Microsoft Ignite 2019. We are at the debug bar, which uh, you won't get this in time, but if you have a problem, you can come and, and sit with the experts and they can help you solve the problems, like with your machines, which is quite cool. Um, we've commandeered the screen behind us and uh, you're here with me to talk about GitHub Actions. I am. Right, so you previously worked for Microsoft until I did. very recently. I did, I used to work for Microsoft. Yep, and before that you actually worked for GitHub, right? And now uh, you're back at GitHub. That's right, that's yep. right. So uh, after Microsoft acquired GitHub, you moved to GitHub to work on Actions. That's correct. Let's start from the beginning. What is GitHub Actions? Right, so we announced GitHub Actions about a year ago at GitHub Universe, which is sort of our version of Ignite. Right. It's it's our developer conference. It happens in the fall. And hap in fact, it's happening uh, next, week. next week. At time of recording, yes. Yes, at, at time of recording. Mm -hmm. I hope to see you all there, or I hope to have seen you all there, whichever <laughs> way right. whichever way that works out. Yep. Um, but so when we released it, our goal for GitHub Actions was repository automation. So okay. like, let's say you want to run a workflow in your repository every time somebody opens an issue uh -huh. or comments on an issue. Let me give you a concrete example. Um, maybe you could have an action that looks for obscenities uh, and then violates your code of conduct and you could have a robot tell that person, hey, yep. shape up. And that makes it a little bit easier because if I'm, you know, if I'm a person on the internet and uh, I'm swearing in a repository because I'm angry yeah. and a, a maintainer comes in, an actual human person comes in and says, hey, knock that off, yep. Yep. I might I might engage with that person and argue with them, but you yeah. can't argue with a robot. Yeah, right. So it's a it's a nice little workflow. So that was kind of you know just an example of what we had envisioned for GitHub Actions back a year ago. We released it as a beta. Uh, we got a lot of feedback really quickly that the thing that people wanted to automate was built right. and releases. Yeah. And we were not tooled up for that. We ran in a Docker container. We had very limited computing power, um, and. That was okay for some workflows. Like if you have a Node.js app, maybe it doesn't need much compilation, yep. and and that could have been okay. But if you're building an iOS app, you can't build in Docker. You got to build on a Mac. Yeah, right. So, uh, so we really took that opportunity to uh, listen to that feedback and sort of retool what we did. So okay. uh, now GitHub Actions uh, offers a full CI/CD system. So uh, you can build on Mac OS, on Linux on uh, Windows, and you can deploy to you know any cloud. Right. So that's that's where we've ended up now. Okay. So, it, and, but it's not just for CI/CD, right? No, um, not at all. You, we still in, uh, you know allow all those sort of repository automation pieces yeah. of functionality. So we're not just a CI/CD system. It's right. it's really a, a a unique thing. Okay. But if your code is in GitHub and you want to build and release, yeah, it's a pretty good way to do it. It's a great way to do it. Well, do you want to show us to like yeah. just? Just the kind of happy path of, of how how you might want to do this. Sure. Yep. So uh, I've got a, a Node.js application here. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a really simple um, Node app. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to get started with GitHub Actions. So it's this button right here, Actions. Yep. And I need to just click on that. And it's going to take me through the the new workflow sort of experience. And what okay. the first thing that it does is looks at what's in my repository. So just quickly, Actions is available, everybody has this now, or is it still private it, it's beta? It's still in beta until, beta. Uh, until Universe. Yeah. So depending on when the show comes out, it may or may not still be in beta. OK, right, gotcha. Great. Right. Um, so yeah, so if, if you don't have that tab, you can go sign up, github.com slash features slash actions, okay. and we'll let you right into the beta. OK. Um, and yeah, so the first thing that happens when you start setting up a GitHub uh, action workflow is that we will look at what is in your repository. Mm -hmm. So we'll detect that I've got a Node.js application and we'll, we'll give you a, a sample workflow, a, you know, a starter workflow. So I can just click set up this workflow and we can take a look at what it's doing. Actually, let me, let me go ahead and commit this so that it starts the build and that'll 
that'll kick off in the background while we talk about what's actually going on here. And so for somebody who's used Azure Pipelines a lot, that UI looks very familiar. It, it, yeah. it, it does look a, a bit familiar, that's right. It does, yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and what will also look a little bit familiar is the YAML. It's not, mm. by no means is it identical, but uh, I think a lot of the, the thinking that informed Azure Pipelines went on to inform GitHub Actions. Right. So it's, uh, it, it's, very, it's, it's very descriptive. Right. So the first thing that, you know, we've, we've got a name for our workflow, and then we've got a trigger. So we'll run on push. So like I said, this isn't a traditional CI CD system that only does CI CD. So mm -hmm. I can set up triggers for things like issue comments and pull request comments right. when releases get created. Uh, but right out of the box for a, a CI on push. So mm -hmm. this will run every time I push to a branch. Okay. Um, I'm going to run on Ubuntu latest. Yep. That's uh, like I said, we have Mac, Linux, and Windows VMs. Uh, and then I'm going to set up a matrix. So this is one of my favorite features in GitHub Actions. Uh, I can really easily set up a, a matrix so that I can test or build across multiple platforms, multiple releases really easily. And so what I want to do is I want to build on Node.js 8, 10, and 12. Okay. So it's as easy as setting up this matrix, and that is really just variable expansion. So what it's going to do is it's going to set this node version variable that I can reuse later in my scripts. Okay. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to check out my code first, just pull down my Git repository, and then I'm going to actually set up that node version that I've specified in the matrix. So I'll get three runs when I do this. It'll run through with node version set to eight, then 10, then 12. So I'll get actually three job runs, uh, one for each. Okay. Finally, I'm going to actually do my build, which is uh, npm run, build, npm test, and that's it. Right. So let's see what it did while we were talking. Oh, hey, I got a green check mark. Everything worked. Nice. That's great. So, uh, so let me dig into that. And you can see, in fact, yeah, there's my variable expansion, that matrix expansion. So I've got a build with Node.js 8, 10, and 12. And we can see exactly what we did. We can expand this out and take a look at, at the logs. So, right, so nothing's hidden from you. No, not at all. And of course, this streams in while it's running. Yep. Uh, so you know, it, it, it's really, really handy. So where does this actually run? Like, what is doing the execution of this? Right. So uh, at GitHub, we have um, we have Max physically racked, and uh -huh. then of course we have uh, virtual machines for you for uh, Windows and Linux. Okay. So you didn't spe you didn't specify that directly though, where that was in this in this definition, right? Well, or did so I miss that? Let, let, let's go back and take a look. Uh -huh. There we go, and let's take a look at our workflow. And so it's this runs on right here. Oh, of course. Oh, you did even point that out. That will cool. th that will identify that. So that's using one of the Ubuntu images that you have provided. That's exactly right. So yeah. it's running in the GitHub Cloud. Right. Great. That's cool. So yeah. once you've built this, this is just doing a build and test, making right. sure that what, what what is there is compiled. Well, the next step would be, you'll, can I can I take this and can I put it somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Where do you want to put it? Do you want to put it in Azure? Do you want to put it? I in... want to put everything in Azure. Well, let, let's <laughs> let's put it in Azure. Um, yeah. So, you know, right now, so far, what I've been doing is with this application is just right click and selecting deploy. I'm told that's a good practice. That's terrible. Um, you had to say it. Though, didn't I, you? Of course I did. Yeah. Uh, so let's set up a new workflow. So I can go back to the actions tab and I can click uh, new workflow. And uh, let's let's go ahead and we'll we'll start from the Node.js, the same the same one that we did. Mm -hmm. um, but what we can do actually is at this point we can go into the marketplace and find actions that can help us. And one of those is a deploy to uh, Azure action. And so I can select this workflow, Azure Web App. Right. Um, and I can click on it and it'll tell me how to get started using it. So what an action is, it's a reusable piece of work. Um, that allows me to, to do some custom things. And so the Azure team has actually published this one for me. So I can just use it right in my workflow. I just need to grab these couple lines and w as well as set up some, some configuration. Um, right. And I've already done that. So I'm going to just pop over here and grab that. And I'm going to paste that right in. OK. So this is a little bit different. Uh, instead of running on push, we're going to run when a release is created. So I don't want to deploy everything to Azure. I only want to deploy when I actually do a release. Right. So when I create a release in GitHub, this will run. Um, and again, it'll, it'll do that checkout. It'll set up my node. Uh, it'll run my build and test. And then finally, it'll use this Azure Web Apps deploy action. And it will 
uh, publish to my app named CalcJS. Okay. And it will publish using this publish profile. And I've already gone ahead and set that up because, okay. uh, I mean, I trust you, but I don't trust you with my Azure secrets. Yeah, right? fair enough. Uh, so I don't want you going in crypto mining. And so if I go into secrets, you can see that this is where I can specify uh, secrets that, that will apply to my workflow runs. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and commit this. Whoops, let me give it a new name. And so the advantage of having this build and deploy in the repo alongside the code is that you can, if somebody clones your repo, they know how to build it and they also know how to deploy it if they, they do. want to as well. That's absolutely right. Um, and you know, you, I always want my workflows, my, my CI CD version right alongside my code because as my code changes, the way I build it may change. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, in the bad old days where these things weren't tied together, it was really easy to get, you know, out of sync. And if I wanted to get an old version of the code, then I would have to remember how to build it. And yeah. that was really complicated. Uh -huh. uh, it was no good. So now when I get an old version, I've still got the YAML that describes how to build it at that particular at that version. So yeah. it's super helpful. So you've just created a new release? I created a new release, yeah. And when I did, so now I've got this new workflow running, and that's a deploy to Azure workflow, and we can click on that. Uh, and we can see what it's doing. Again, I get those nice live logs. So we, uh, we did the checkout. Um, we did uh, a setup. Yep. And then uh, right now it's actually doing the deploy. And so it's going ahead and setting that up, and it's going to send that up to, uh, to Azure as my deployment. Right. Uh, and then I'll have a whole new version of my website running. All right. That's excellent. And yeah. then if, so as well, like if somebody forks this as well, all they need to do is provide their own secret. That's right. To their own Azure subscription. That's exactly right. And they can do everything themselves. That's right. Everything they set up. Only to their own, uh, their own, you know, website instead of mine. Yeah. Which is much better than just giving somebody the, the code. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. And letting them guess. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All right. So this uh, this is going to Azure App Service, right? This yes, is, that's uh, right. And of course, I, I could have done a container. There's a, a an Azure action to do a container-based deploy to, to an Azure Web App as well. Um, the Azure team's been been really busy. They're creating all sorts of actions. It's really exciting. Right. Yeah. So there's obviously a lot of actions that you can choose from. If if there's something that you want to do that you can't do, or that it's, there's no action for, I assume that that's extensible as well. It is. So you've got you've got two options, right? So if I if I pop back to my workflow, you know what it, what is a workflow except just uh, the ability to first run actions and second just run a script. A script. Yep. Uh, so that's an easy way to to just extend it, whatever you want to do. The other thing you could do is you can write your own action. Right. Uh, and that's very straightforward. You've got two choices. You can either build a Docker container that has all your, you know, everything already, uh, and we'll just spin up that container, build it, run the, uh, you know, whatever your entry point is in that Docker container, mm -hmm. and just use the output. And that's cool, and I, I really like that. That was sort of, again, that harkens back to the first iteration of GitHub Actions. Right. The problem with it is it only runs on Linux. Right, okay. Um, you know, because Mac OS doesn't really, it could run Linux images, but you know, with Windows, we want to be able to run Windows Docker images. Yeah. So, yeah. so things are just set up so that only uh, Docker-based actions can run within a Linux environment. Okay. So the cross-platform solution to that is to build JavaScript action. And so we've right. got a toolkit that you can use to get started. Um, and basically what it is is you get all the GitHub context. So you get the equivalent of a webhook, right? So you know all of these sort of on commands, these triggers, mm -hmm. map really closely to the, the same webhooks that we would deliver every time somebody opens an issue, every time somebody pushes. Right. And so you can take all that data out of the webhook body, like what branch is being built, uh, who, uh, you know, submitted it, yep. and you can use that within your action. Okay. Then you can use Octokit. Octokit is our REST API, mm -hmm. uh, or you know, the JavaScript API, and, and you know, perform you know whatever, whatever you want to do with it. To do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's very extensible. And so you're given the context of like that security context as well. So when you use Octokit, you're just right back there in that same repo. With yeah, the same. That's exactly right. We give you a you know very short term token that you can use to mm -hmm. uh, to act on that repo. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so we have is this has this finished deploying now? I want to see it. Yeah, let's. Uh, it, it did. It did finish uh, deploying. So let's go to my actions. And there's that deployment that triggered on our release. Right. 
Yeah, and it's all done. And so if I actually navigate to that website, there we go. And we can no calculator. Yeah, it's a it's like the pocket calculator you had when you were a kid. Nice. Yeah. That's very cool. Cool. And so that was that only took a few seconds, and you did paste a few things, but it looked like the description of how to actually do that Azure stuff was. Yeah. Incredibly straightforward. That's right. Right. If people want to learn and get started with how to do this, where's the best place for them to yeah. go? Yeah. Uh, GitHub.com slash features slash actions. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the landing page. Uh, again, right now we're in beta, so you can uh, go ahead and sign up. By the, when we're out of beta, which again will be, will be very soon, very soon. Um, you know, this will have all the information. And so the documentation and everything is right here. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much for showing me this. This oh. is a, a, another awesome option for CICD. Absolutely. Because we don't want to just right click publish, right? We, we do not. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm glad that was a joke. Um, thanks again, Ed. And <laughs> Thank um, you. enjoy the rest of the conference, and we will see you again next time for another DevOps Lab.